quem acreditou no amor, no sorriso, na flor. Então sonhou, sonhou e perdeu a paz. O amor, o sorriso e a flor se transformam depressa demais. Quem no coração abrigou a tristeza de ver tudo isto se perder e na solidão procurou caminho seguiu já descrente de um dia feliz que Chorou, chorou E tanto que se pranto já secou Quem depois voltou Ao amor, a sorriso, a flor Em tal tudo encontrou E a própria dor Severou a sorriso a sequim, tristeza acabou. Berkowitz, your platform assistant, and we're very happy to have Irene Yalente, who we just heard from, to um, to play her magical music, and welcoming back Reverend Denise de Simone, who's going to be helping us embrace oneness. And now, if you'll join me for Centering Inspiration by Morgan Nichols. Let July be July and let August be August. And let yourself just be even in the uncertainty. You don't have to fix everything. You don't have to solve everything. You don't have to make everything okay. And you can still find peace and grow in the wild of changing things. Has come 
and the land is dark, and the moon is the only light we'll see. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand by me, and darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand now. Stand by me. Stand by me. If the sky that we Should tumble and fall, all the mountains should crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear. Just as long as you stand, stand by me, and darling, darling, stand. By me, oh, stand by me, oh, stand now. Stand by me, stand by me, darling, darling, stand by me, oh, stand now. Stand by me, stand by me. So darling, darling, stand, stand by me. Oh, stand by, stand by me, stand by me. If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, oh, the mountain. To crumble to the sea. I know, I know, I won't cry. I won't cry. No, I won't shed a tear. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. And darling, darling, stand by me. Stand by me, oh stand now. Stand by me, stand by me. Whenever you're in trouble, won't you stand by me? Please stand by. Stand by me, stand by me, oh. Stand by me, please. Stand by me. Stand by me. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you so 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 much. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to be with you all today. It is truly an honor and my pleasure. And I am going to be sharing about embracing oneness and stepping into our soul's purpose. And this is a little prayer that I wrote a very long time ago. <clears throat> it's the oneness that I am puts my feet to my soul's purpose and every step I take, I move in the direction of my highest and best. 
with an open and grateful heart, I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So I wrote this prayer a long time ago, and I say it often. And many times I say it several times a day. Because when I'm immersed in the energy of oneness, it keeps me focused and on track and knowing that I am walking on sacred ground. And with every step I take, I am moving in the direction of my highest and my best. And it really helps to alleviate any fear that I might be heading in the wrong direction. Because if I am, this prayer just strengthens me strengthens me, grounds me, and strengthens my belief in God, knowing that God has my back. And she places her hand on the back of my heart chakra and guides me gently in the proper direction. And in the tapestry of life, each of us has a unique thread, yes? And together, we are weaving the fabric of our universal oneness. And we create a beautiful and intricate tapestry. So we're all interconnected. We're bound by that universal energy that just flows through everything, every living thing, every living being. And this energy is the essence of oneness, the recognition that we're all part of the same divine source. And we need to trust this. We need to trust this because it is truth. And we need to not only trust it, but take that trust and live into it every single day. So embracing oneness, it means that oneness is its more than just a concept. It is a profound truth that transcends individual differences. And it unites us in love and compassion. And when we embrace oneness, we recognize the divinity in ourselves and in others, and we see beyond our differences. And it connects us all on a deeper soul-to-soul -soul level. And by embracing this oneness, we are actually cultivating a sense of unity and harmony within our spiritual community, within ourselves, within our community, and then out into the world. So, each of us is born with a unique purpose, yes? A soul's mission that calls us to fulfill our highest potential and contribute to the greater good of all. And when we align with our soul's purpose, we experience a deep sense of fulfillment and joy. And we feel that joy. We feel a sense of purpose and meaning that goes beyond material success or validation for anything outside ourselves. Sometimes we're so consumed with validation outside of ourselves. This transcends that. And so stepping into our soul's purpose requires, it requires courage. It requires self-awareness. It requires a willingness to listen, listen to the whispers of our hearts. I love that, the whispers of our hearts. Do you, do we, do we really take enough time and give ourselves enough time to really listen to the whispers of our heart? And the intersection of oneness and purpose is really profound because when we embrace the oneness and align with our soul's purpose, we unlock, it's like a magical superpower. We have this key, we unlock a powerful synergy that propels us forward on our personal and collective spiritual journey. And it allows us to serve others authentically and make a really positive impact in the world. You know, for me personally, I've reached um, another level, it was a while ago, of my soul's purpose. I tired myself out writing yarns and yarns and yarns about, oh, what my purpose is. It was, you know, like volumes of my purpose in life. And I thought it had to be complex to be meaningful. And then one day I kind of woke up and it came to me and I thought, you know, my life's purpose was very simple. My purpose in life is to enjoy, enjoy every minute of my life. 
And when I'm in joy and enjoying life, my life, people around me are feeling the joy and enjoying their life. It's a contagious thing in my mission, my personal mission. So my purpose is to enjoy. My personal mission is to compassionately spread joy and encourage laughter. You know, a few weeks ago, I did something that I've been wanting to do forever, for a really long, long, long time. And I knew it was going to be a big part of my purpose. And I finally took a class in stand-up comedy. So I took this class not knowing that it, <clears throat> excuse me, was going to culminate in a, a show at the local theater, which seats 200 people in our town. And, you know, I've spoken in for 10, 12 years in front of thousands of people, but this, <laughs> this brought a new level of compassionately spreading joy and encouraging laughter. And we each had an eight to 10 minute skit, which meant you got to be on your game. And I was the first of eight people to perform that night in front of 200 people. I was so scared. I don't scare easily, but I knew that fear. I knew it was important for me to take that scary step and stretch myself to be really in my purpose and, and really honor my soul because my soul really wanted to do this. And that fear propelled me. It propels all of us to grow. And I love making people laugh. If you know me, you know, that if you're hanging out with me, you're learning and you're laughing and we're having a good time. So I tucked my fear in my pocket, said a lot of prayers, and we were all so connected through laughter and joy. And that connection with everyone was, it was so palpable. We were all immersed in just simple fun and joy. And by recognizing that interconnectedness of all beings and honoring our unique gifts and our talents, we're really contributing to the uh, a collective evolution of consciousness. That night, all the brave souls that went out onto that platform, which most of us had never done anything like this before, we knew we were raising the consciousness. We were raising the vibration of joy and 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 love and compassion and simplicity of the whole planet. And we contributed to the healing of the planet because we need to laugh more. I don't know if you know this, but statistically, children laugh, oh, maybe on average 300 times a day. Adults, this is sad. We laugh, well, not me, I laugh all day. Maybe statistically, 15 times a day. And we must, we must do something about this. Especially now, the world needs it more than ever. We really need to get a little silly. Things are heavy. I think you would agree with that. So this oneness is supreme being. It is the energy that is omnipresent and omniscient. It's the intelligence that knows only good, only health, only passion, only compassion, and only perfection of patterns, and it knows only divine connection and divine alignment. It knows joy, peace, and most importantly, only love. In that oneness, there is no recognition of anything ne negative. It just doesn't exist. It, it, it doesn't know anything negative. It only knows positivity. It's springtime now. Everything's coming back to life. We don't have to do anything about that. It just knows. It knows what to do, how to do it. And most of the time when we leave it alone, it does everything fine on its own. And connecting with and melding into that place of oneness with that knowing and perfection, it just catapults us in that direction of our soul's purpose. And for me, it puts my feet to my soul's purpose. You know, the masters always say, you have to put your feet to it. And we can accomplish a whole lot by sitting in meditation and visualizing and visualization, but it really is not that easy to have things come to fruition if we aren't putting our feet to it. And when we're in that oneness, nothing can stop us from putting our feet to our soul's purpose. We just, it's effortless. It's with ease and grace that we can trust that 
We don't have to know. We go so caught up in our brains half the time. Well, I have to know and I have to know what to do. And No, no, you don't. You figure out why. God will figure out how. Because God knows. We don't always need to know. The oneness knows. Connect to it. The universal intelligence knows. We don't have to make everything an arduous task. And yes, every step we take is an affirmation that we are moving in that perfect direction of our highest and best. In our oneness, there is no other direction. You know, each of us has that soul's purpose. Some of us may not have found it. Maybe we know people that we can encourage to know their soul's purpose, may have not found it yet. Or maybe people have found it. Like when I realized that my soul's purpose was one word, two words, to enjoy. I thought, oh, well, you know, I don't really, I can't really believe that because that's kind of challenging to accept. Maybe it's too challenging because sometimes it's too simple and we have to discount it because it shouldn't be that simple. Yeah, yes, it it can be that simple. And I believe everyone, as we have a different thumbprint with the billions of people on the planet, we have a unique expression, our own unique imprint for the planet. I do, I do, you do, and we all do. Hold on. So I want to, just in closing, I want us to all say this prayer together. And you can repeat after me. The oneness that I am puts my feet to my soul's purpose. With every step I take, I move. I move in the direction of my highest and best. With an open, open and grateful heart. From the depths of my soul, I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And thank you all for sharing this sacred space and sharing this time with me. And by, may that light of our oneness guide our journey. 